Hey there, it's me, Lottie, and today what I thought I would do is a shelf life episode around the primal wound. I need this book. So I have spoken about this book in a previous video. I think it is called Do Your Own Work, Adoptee, Do Your Own Work. And it's just me talking about a few different resources and ways that we can help ourselves to unpack and heal from what I have now come to learn is adoption trauma. And this book was really formative in my beginning deeper investigations. Um, I came across this book from listening to some podcasts on adoption and it just was mentioned over and over and over again when adoptees would tell their story and like how they just became you know, what we would call conscious. They use terms like out of the fog, which um, varying schools of thought about that as the best way to describe it. But I understand it back to when um, my, my people, my generation, we used to say, or we still say conscious. Some people might say woke, (laughs) but um, about this particular topic. So I was listening to a lot of uh, adoptee-centered podcasts that have stories and they really focus on adoptee rights and a lot of things that I had just really never given a lot of thought to. And that was one of the main things that I learned is that when I was adopted in 1967, the narrative was very much so um, not to keep it a secret, although there are some instances where it is kept secret, but even if it's not kept secret, it's not talked about in a really robust kind of way that addresses everything that's going on. And that is enough for a million different episodes (laughs) of just talking this thing through. So I'm just gonna focus on this book for now, for today. So it was written by Nancy Newton Verrier or Verrier, I think it's Verrier and written in, I have my notes here. I actually have notes. (laughs) Most of my videos are unscripted and this ain't that scripted. Okay. (laughs) So anyway, um, it was written in 1993. She is an adoptive parent and it was written for her daughter after 10 years of research. And this was, Her master's thesis is what ultimately produced this book. And what it says is that it is a cross section of experiences having to do with relinquishment, adoption, bonding, and perinatal phenomena. And it is about adoptees. And what is the primal wound? So basically the primal wound is what happens when an infant, and it doesn't have to just be adoption, but in this case, that's what we're talking about. When an infant is taken away from their biological mother, especially, and all the ways in which that interruption can manifest throughout their life. Um, There is bonding that takes place in utero pre-conscious memory, uh, a biological, historical, emotional, and existential connection with unconscious communication, instinctual, and intuitive. And as a parent, I'm a parent, I have two biological children, and I understand that. I understand having that connection with them. And um, so that severing or that... um, breaking that bond is what 
we are talking about when we say the primal wound. And this book goes into detail about the number of ways it can manifest. And um, I personally felt it was the first time that I had ever had something speak so clearly to a lot of things that I didn't know there was language for, that I didn't even, I don't know, I wasn't even aware of that existed. It was reassuring, but it was a little bit disconcerting because um, I literally felt like someone was like spying on me or like it was invasive, like it was really, of course, hidden close to home, right? And after I got past the initial, like, oh my God, oh my God, like after I got past the initial, um, and that can be fearful, right? Because it's like, I don't know, that's another part of the adoption narrative often is this sense of, I shouldn't be talking about this or I certain I shouldn't have certain feelings about this. Um, I shouldn't be angry about this or I shouldn't feel like I shouldn't have questions about this. And, and that is a huge thing to carry around. And so when this, uh, when things were being addressed like so openly and clearly in the book and there were so many examples of other adoptees feeling very similarly. I just, I had to take my time with this. It took me two years to read this book. And that is because I kept having to put it down as I had to allow my consciousness to grow. I had to gently interrogate my own beliefs my own feelings and you know think about things from perspectives that i may have never really thought about them before so i really had a lot of self-work to do now i will say that both of my parents adoptive parents but they're my parents of course they have both made their transitions um, a number of years ago so I don't have them here to like talk to about this or um, share my insights, but I already know. See, that, and that's another part of it. I don't know that it would have been a very uh, smooth or welcome conversation to have with them. Maybe now at this stage of the game, but definitely not when I was younger. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It just, that just wasn't the way things were, you know, for better or worse. I have reasons to think it could have been a lot better if it had been talked about in, in a lot of different ways. But um, anyway, so I just really wanted to share my reaction to the book. And one thing I do want to point out, you know, about the bonding in utero and whether or not people think it's quote unquote real or not. I mean, there's also instances where a person is not told that they were adopted and some of those people still, they, they know, they know something is, they just know something is, is not, <laughs> something is not connected. You know, something is, something is off. And the example of that I'm going to give, and I'll put the link down below, is to listen to, there's a, um, the Moth Radio Hour podcast, which is a great storytelling podcast there's one episode with daryl dmc mcdaniels of run dmc his personal story around finding out he was adopted like in his 30s he never knew and he went through a big old big old crisis that brought it all to a head you know babies can recognize their mother from the moment that they're born. So of course they're going to realize that something has happened. And I just want to read this little par this paragraph here. 
And like I said, this is, I can't do, this is not a, this is good or bad or, you know, my, I'm not a booktuber, but I just, I just like to share resources. And I know that I'm not the only one out here that is trying to unpack, you know, whatever your issue may be, you know, and these are mine <laughs> and, and they're probably somebody else's too. Okay. So anyway. In the preface, it says, For love to be freely accepted, there must be trust. And despite the love and security our daughter has been given, she has suffered the anxiety of wondering if she would again be abandoned. For her, this anxiety manifested itself in typical testing out behavior. At the same time, she tried to provoke the very rejection that she feared. There was a reaction on her part to reject us before she could be rejected by us. It seemed that allowing herself to love and be loved was too dangerous. She couldn't trust that she would not again be abandoned. Now, I know this applies, like I said, to more than just adoptees. I feel like this is a a serious issue throughout a majority of our population from what I see going on around relationships, our ability to love each other, to love our own selves. And so anyway, yeah, that. So this book had a tendency to, it, it really got into my stuff. And it left me feeling a little bit like, okay, all my bags are unpacked now, what do I do? So there is a second book. This is Coming Home to Self by the same author. And, and we'll see, this is, um, this seems to be more of, it goes deeper, I think, but I think it also, I hope it's more like a workbook or, you know, gives me more to work with because again, I came to this being on a personal healing journey and I had to get down into my stuff. What made me who I am? And that's different for everybody, but that's where your stuff is. <laughs> your stuff is in what has happened to you, how you were brought up, all the things that make you, you, that's where your stuff is. So. You might as well go into your stuff because that's the stuff that's going to keep coming up. So I'm going to close with that because I really wanted this to be, I guess, more of a, I don't know, a reaction video. Um, and my reaction is something I've been talking about all along. Helping myself is the best thing that I can do. A part of helping myself might involve searching reunion, inviting reunion, uh, biological relationships with biological relatives. But that alone is not going to be the answer and, it, and I will not be fixed, okay? It's not about being fixed. It is about understanding myself, understanding some of the ways in which I have coped with certain things in my life and whether or not those things are yielding the most productive and positive results. So my road has been to go down this adoption trauma route. And in a one video or a couple, maybe I'll share with you <laughs> that whole story because it is rather magical and it is rather beautiful, even though it's very difficult and very challenging at times, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm -mm. I know it's what I need to do and I'm looking forward to the journey. So like I said, if you are a member of the adoption triad, meaning you're an adoptive parent, a birth mother, an adoptee, if you love or care for an adoptee, if you are a therapist, 
for adoptees or want to have a more adoptee center centric focus, then I recommend reading this book. And yeah, I recommend reading this book and it's and think of it as a tool. I know I'll be revisiting this. I don't think I'll be done with it. I um, first had ordered it from the library. You know, I got it on their interlibrary loan uh, program. And as soon as I got it home, I went online and ordered this one and the and the book coming home to self. As soon because I knew they needed to be in my permanent library. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that was informative enough to pick your curiosity to make you maybe take on checking it out and i will see you at the next video and until then i hope you're safe and i hope you're warm and taking care all right peace